Yeah, boys and girls, what's going on with you? It is BQ. It is the Impact Lounge Impact Review here at the Negative BQ channel. And are you ready for this week's excuse? Because you know I always got a brand new excuse for you every week why I'm giving you a Tuesday review or Monday or sometimes Wednesday. I think I've even done Thursday reviews at times. I'll try to I'll try to keep this story brief. You know, I don't like to do story time with BQ, baby. So um, I'm working overnights in my job right now. People don't like working overnights, so I volunteer to do it because I like it. And it's easier for me during the day to get things accomplished, to get my kids to school, from school, all that good stuff. Now, also being in the Air Force Reserves, your employer is mandated to, uh, if you say I have my two week, two days out of the month or two weeks out of the year, or if I'm just like, I did three and a half months at the end of last year. Your employer is required to allow you to do your military duty. That, that takes precedence over your actual job. So this month, um, I had my two days on the 1st and 2nd of February. So we don't do two two days. We don't do a weekend out of the month. We actually do it during the week at my job. So I forgot to tell my actual like civilian employer that, hey, I got military duty. So my dumbass... Uh, and I, I just didn't want to like do it at the last minute to where they had to like find someone else to work because people don't like working my shift. So I said, you know what? Um, I'm going to work an overnight Thursday, uh, Wednesday into Thursday. And then I'm going to drive to the air force base, which is an hour away. Do my day there, come home an hour, <laughs> make dinner for my family, go to sleep for three and a half hours and then go to work again. And then get off work, go to the base again, drive an hour home again, make dinner, go to sleep. So, like, essentially, I had three overnights in a row with my military duty mixed in. And it was me just, you know what, fuck it, let's make some extra money. You know what I'm saying? I've been exhausted. This was one of the dumbest things I've ever done in my life. And I will never do this again. But I've been exhausted the last several days and unable to watch anything without falling asleep or, you know, certainly could not podcast. So I finally watched the episode and uh, I'm dropping, I'm uh, recording this now Tuesday morning for you guys. So one of these days, one of these years, I don't know, I've been saying this for years, one of these days I'm going to get on, on the ball with these reviews. I'm hoping to be a little better because now the show is better. So I'm more inclined to like watch it live or to watch it much sooner after it airs. Like we're before, when I was like, oh, I'm not really feeling the show. I, I just like, I, it was two or three days past before I watched it. But, you know, things are a little different now. So sorry for the long story. But, you know, I had to give you my weekly excuse. Uh, if it's first time here, it's the number one place to be. Did I say that correctly? Number one place to be covering TNA impact. If it's good, I'm going to say it's good. If it's bad, I'm going to say it's bad. And one thing people always accuse me of is when something is good saying it's bad and that is not the case if something is good i will say it's good i am not going to get this we're not going to get some five star match and i'm going to tell you how shitty it was that's not not how this works it's just that if i don't like it i'm going to say it and some people can't handle the truth let's get into it uh let's get into this episode and i'm going to do uh later today a real quick recap of last week's explosion just for my general thoughts on the new show i don't i don't expect to be reviewing it going forward but uh, i want to give general thoughts on the new show um but this kicked off with nick nemeth versus trey miguel and this was this was really good um and it ended uh because i'm not you know you guys know i'm not taking it a move through move here we're going right to the end nick nemeth wins we knew he was going to win knew he was going to win what was shocking to me is that he won with the super kick and I can't remember the last time someone's ever won with that move outside of like James Storm or something. And it's it's really crazy because uh, it, in wrestling, you don't win if it's not your finisher or a roll up. You know what I mean? I've always wanted because um, wrestlers have such large move sets now. Like when I grew up as a kid, everyone did the same moves, except they had their two setup moves before the finisher and then their finisher. But. Aside from that, whether you're watching Jake the Snake, Million Dollar Man, Honky Tonk Man, whatever the hell, like for the most part, everyone did the same moves. Now everyone's move set is so, you know, they 
they've got all all sorts of you know shit that they pull out yet they just still win with the finisher every time i just think it, it would be realistic more realistic just in general if every once in a while someone just won with a different move you know what i'm saying i hit pause or pause for a second to do something with my cat and then i flip on another light so i think i think we have a new aesthetic here i'm gonna hit pause again <laughs> All right, I'm back. That's the rec that's the magic of doing recorded videos and not doing it live. So, um, so yeah, it, it's like you knew Nick Nimbeth was going to win a match, but just the the fact that he won with a super kick was I actually kind of appreciated that. Just something something different. Um, after the match, guess what the fuck? So last week, four out of six matches ended with post match attack angles. Guess what the fuck happened with the first match of this episode? It is a post-match attack angle with Steve Macklin and Zachary Wentz. I said this last week. Do not, TNA, for the fuck. Do not get in the habit of creating stories by post-match attack angles. That's what AEW does. Like, do not do that. I mean, get... Come on, this was like a good match, a good opener. And then you do this. My concern with the Rascals now, so it looks like they're kind of got something going on with Steve Macklin coming together like a little faction maybe, which is a step up from Shira and Champagne Singh. My concern is now they're going to become lackeys. Uh, they've both taken, single, taken singles losses to Nick Nemeth. And um, this is why the tag team division can get so stale at times. And they had this issue with the X division, the X, the knockouts division. Is that unless you're wrestling for the title, there's nothing for you to do. And they can't. There's never a compelling storyline that you can be involved in. So you know, just to keep you relevant, for lack of a better term. These guys are the former tag team champions. Their rematch clause or you know, Tom had a contracted rematch, whatever the fuck he says. Was a four-way at Hard to Kill. They lose. I mean, they're on the losing end of that, right? And now there's just nothing for them to do, right? It just So let's put them in a faction with Steve Macklin. So I get that, but the problem is when you do factions, majority of the time it's the leader who's beating people and then some fucking jobbers. And that's the way it always seems to to end up you know what i mean so that that is my um concern i'm gonna hit pause again because i've got cats driving me crazy again so once again the magic of recorded videos i'm back again this is the most unprofessional podcast of all time i've paused it several times i've got up i've messed with the cats i'm recording this on a tuesday i mean my god anyway kind of what i was saying is just now now my concern is that these guys are becoming lackeys and they're just going to drop a lot of matches and then one day out of the blue they're going to be number one contenders for the uh, the tag team titles again so um but but at the same time i'm kind of looking forward to these guys as a group um i just i think they've tried this with steve macklin once before getting him some counterparts and they just don't mesh with him so as he said, this feels right. I hope it feels right to us on on screen. You know, one thing I didn't say last week, which was super random, was the dude from 98 Degrees being ringside. I would imagine he lives in Las Vegas. I don't, I don't really know. Random as shit, though. <laughs> I guess he's a wrestling fan. Uh, I thought that was funny. Before I get to the next match, the other thing I kind of wanted to talk about real quick my longtime viewers know that i talk about this kind of shit was the intro to the show now obviously we got crossed the line instead of we own the night we own the night is dead finally except when they bring it back in 10 years for the anniversary show because it's, it's nostalgic but um I, I like i like the the recaps a little better this time around problem is they're a little long and I timed it last week and the actual show where we got someone coming to the ring. I forgot who was in the opening match. Didn't happen for four minutes. Like you cannot 
waste that much time in the beginning of your show because people who are not that hardcore viewers are going to drop off. You know, at least with the highlights they did, they were a little more relevant. Like sometimes they'll just be showing whatever, you know, this is what happened last week. Like if, if we don't, if it's not a big angle, don't fucking show it, you know? So that is the one thing I'll say when they did the recaps, it was more showing hard to kill stuff. So it made sense. This one made some sense too, but it's, it's too long. And they like doing slow motion, which the whole thing is not in slow motion like it was before. But every time you do that, you're like wasting precious seconds every time you slow down the video. You know, I mean, are you wait? You probably could have cut 30 seconds off that if it was there wasn't so much slow motion, but it's too much. It's it's just too much to start the show. And then you play the song. It, it's too much. Then after this, um, Khan and Diener are backstage and my my eyes rolled immediately. Just because the, the design stuff is is dead, which is the theme here. But um, when I say my eyes rolled, it's because we would get these promos and it was it's just always the same shit. And they're just standing in front of the the impact TV backstage where Gia Miller stands. They just turn off the lights and make it red. So I, it was just like, man, it's just the same shit every time with these guys. But I was actually kind of intrigued because Khan is like clearly they're clearly breaking up the design. They did this episode. But Khan tells him that design is dead, and tonight he's going to remind the world who the baddest man in TNA is. I don't think anyone at any point has ever thought that. Like, we don't need that reminder. You know what I mean? I don't think anyone's thought he's the baddest man in TNA at any point in his run. But there's a lot of people who are really bored with Big Khan. And I've, I've said this before for some of like my newer viewers here. I really, I was a really big fan of the the Ascension when they were in the, when NXT blah, 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 when they were in NXT once upon a time. They were you know the most dominant tag team in N NXT history. I was really into them, so I, I hold on to that little piece a little bit. So I kind of like Big Con for that reason. Like I'm I'm holding on, but at the same time, and my guy Mike Gilbert talks about this too, when. Over the years, they bring in the retreads, the, the WWE guys, the big cons, the dangos, the heaths who who show up and don't reinvent themselves. And they're just kind of doing a, some, you know, a knockoff of what they did before. And I just don't think. I don't think that works on TNA television. I just think we want to see something different. So now I'm a little more intrigued because it looks like he's going to do something a little different. But, you know. I guess we'll see, but I, I kind of have a little little bit of interest in this. And Mike Bailey confronts Steve Macklin and the Rascals backstage. Um, and this is the typical, like, bump into someone backstage, create a match for next week. I get Mike Bailey something to do. It's, it's hard, difficult to write creative for him, so let's just bump into someone backstage. And we got um, Decay taking on Myla Moore and Savannah Thorne ourselves a job match i wonder you know it made me think again to to when i was there for snake eyes and the two jobbers came came out for the match with dango and oleg prudius and everyone thought it was like a debuting tag team because they came running out like it was Shawn michaels and marty Jannetty. like this music just hits no one recognizes it and these guys coming running out and it's two jobbers we don't need the jobbers to have entrance music especially if it's not on TV, they should just walk out to the ring. So anyway, um, Decay had a match here, and I, re I really like the uh, the finisher, the um, assisted sit-down powerbomb. Like, I thought that looked really good. Um, I'm not going to talk about the match. It was a squash match. But I thought the finisher looked really good because they've tried a few different finishers, whether they're part of the Death Dolls. There was one at one point where it was like uh, some kind of like Rosemary hit him with a spear. And then I forgot the uh, what, what Havoc did. But the move didn't make any sense. It, it was it was something about the direction that Rosemary hit the spear and then the direction that uh, Havoc was slamming him down or something that it just didn't make any sense. And it looked awful. But this looked really, really good. And, and Rosemary's in really good shape right now. So she was just able to make this. Uh, you know, the assisted part of the power bomb just looked really good. 
And, uh, you know, they're going to continue to feud with these women forever, I think. Um, Killer Kelly and Masha Slamovich, because, you know, why not? Who the, who else are they going to freaking fight? So after this, we get Jim Miller backstage with MK Ultra, And it looks better. It looks better than last week, the, the, the backstage stuff, but it still does not look good. And it's still, it, you know, there's still shadows and it just is just not as dark. But there's just clearly someone in this company that thinks it looks good. It thinks it looks different. And I'm okay for different, but different has to be good also. So th- there is still a lack of self-awareness with how these backstage angles look. And to be honest with you, I, I agree. I mean, I, I don't agree. I relate because, you know, I'm a, gra- I'm a graphic designer. I'm a professional. I'm a certified graphic designer. I have been since like 2009. Okay. But I had my periods of time where I did stuff that I thought looked good and it didn't. You can go back to the thumbnails I did to start the freaking channel. Okay. And I was like, okay, well, these look kind of cool. Like they really didn't. They looked like shit actually. But sometimes it just, you know, it, it, it takes some like looking back and be like, you know what? This doesn't look as good as I thought it did. And having a self-awareness to improve and to be better. Because even though I've been a graphic designer, thumbnails was was kind of a new concept to me. So it took me a while to get my groove. Like now I got the baddest thumbnails in the game. You feel me? But there was a point where it wasn't good and I thought it was good. But I had, you know, I had the self-awareness to at one point be like, yo, this doesn't actually look that that great. They don't. They they do not in this company when it comes to these back the, the backstage lighting and, and all that. It's it's not there. It's clearly not there. And I'm gonna do my best to not talk about it every single fucking episode in 2024 like I was doing in 2023 and 2022 and 2021 and 2020 because it's been horrible forever. I'm trying to focus more on the good of the show right now and and the wrestling and the improvements and the growth. Like I want to put more of my energy and effort into that rather than getting mad at this backstage stuff. I'm pretty I'm I'm sure I'm always going to say, "Oh, it looks like shit." Like I'm I'm sure I'm going to throw that in at some point. But um they clearly just think this looks good and it just doesn't, you know, and it's not going to change. I thought the show, the, uh, the editing and the color correction that they did on the sh- episode this week was a little better. Like last week. So the last two weeks, not so much, but it looks like there's, you know, a little bit of improvement. And, you know, we, they did this match and, or these, uh, this tapings in Orlando. I didn't think it looked as bad as a lot of people did. We can, we've come down to earth a little bit because Hard to Kill was, remember, we had beer goggles on for Hard to Kill. And I said that. I said, we're going to have, you know, drunk goggles on for the first month or so into this TNA rebrand. And then it's going to start coming down to earth a little bit. And we're going to see what the show is, re- you know, really is going to be. Because, I mean, Snake Eyes, there were so many people there. And, you know, you see on Twitter, oh, you know, we had almost as many people's collision. And then people start saying, once we get a TV deal, you know, it's going to surpass AEW. And now we're coming back down to earth a little bit. We're wrestling in a dark arena. You know, there's not as many fans. But I didn't think it looked as bad as a lot of people said. I thought there was a, I thought there was a good amount of people there. I just think if they lit up the audience, which they clearly don't want to do, it would have looked a lot better. Um, it would have looked, I mean, from the hard cam angle, it would have looked like an episode of, freaking collision you know what i mean like it, there was a lot of people on the hard cam angle obviously when you pan around there's not you know bleachers and risers going in every single direction but um it looked a little bit better uh but they interviewed masha and kelly backstage who are tremendous and then danny luna and jody threat comes up and jody threat cannot talk i'm still confused what was seen in her to like bring her into the company <laughs> but but she's okay i mean she's she serves her purpose everyone can't be a star on the roster you got to have people who are going to lose but she doesn't really lose that much so i don't i don't really get it um but it's a nice her and danny luna is a nice dynamic though i think they're going to grow together into being you know kind of a decent tag team that hopefully they're able to build and give some character to outside of the title picture. You know, like I said earlier, who was I talking about? The Rascal 
titles. You're not wrestling for the tag team titles. They struggle to find something creatively for you to do to keep you hot. You know, um, these girls aren't, aren't hot in that sense. I don't mean physically. I mean, with, as far as momentum goes. But um, but hopefully they can just find a way to keep them just relevant, I guess, without being like, hey, you're wrestling for the titles next week, which is probably what's going to happen. They're probably going to wrestle for the titles sooner than later. But we got Alan Angels hosting the soundcheck with Josh Alexander. And I feel like this was custom made for me, just tailor made for my my critiques of their <laughs> their fucking production quality over the years. I actually thought this was hilarious, but I love Alan Angels. I thought this shit was funny as shit. At first, I was like, this doesn't really look very good. And he's sitting here like, oh, look how it is. It's just random lights in the background, you know, kind of like uh, when they when, when uh, in the impact era, they just have the random pink lights and the <laughs> pink and purple lights all over the arena. And people will go stand in front of him and cut a promo. Uh, it, it, he, just, he just had random lights in the back. And <laughs> the graphic for this is like two pieces of tape holding up the, the banner saying soundcheck hosted by Alan Angel's special guest Josh Alexander. The camera's shaking all over the place, which TNA made look good for many years. So I didn't really think much of it at first. And it shows, you know, I think it was like Josh Alexander's feet by accident and someone's hands in front of the camera and actually show, you know, angels is saying, okay, now get up and come back in and I'm going to introduce you. I mean, it, he on purpose was doing like an amateur interview show. And he was playing into the fact that these never look good. You know, what was uh, the one with Tennille Dashwood all about me, which was funny, but, you know, just the, it's like they're just in a random arena corner of the arena with a potted plant. It, dude, it's like me set it up, setting up here with next to the fucking window on a wall. You know what I mean? I'm not one of those dudes. I'm not a Mark podcaster. You're not going to see like a championship belt behind me and all this shit. Like, I'm just like, yo, I'm in I'm in the room here. I'm recording, you know. That's how a lot of their backstage segments are. They're just like, hey, let's just find a corner of the ar- arena. Let's w- Who cares what it looks like? And let's sit down and put a sofa. It's like they played into that with this. And he was talking about, uh, you know, he was kind of inferring that Josh has, has to step on toes to get to the top. And, and uh, I, he said he's not setting a good example for his son. I thought this shit was funny. I was... Um, I was really into this. I hope that there's more of it. I hope there's more sound check because they do a lot of start and stop stuff. Remember about four months ago, Jim Miller's doing that sit down with like, uh, I think it was a Frankie Kazarian, right? And they're like, it's a new segment where I sit down with wrestlers and we have an introspective about their career and blah, 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 blah. And I said, this show is never going to show up again on Impact Television. I said, like, this is the first time and only time they're ever going to do this. And guess who was right? So I hope that this is something to kind of keep going because I thought it was funny. There's, you know, there's probably some of you who didn't find it funny, thought it was stupid, but I, I liked it a lot. I didn't like it a lot. I like a lot. Ryan Myers versus Kevin Knight. I love this Kevin Knight guy. I think, um, you know, he's here on excursion. I think he's going to lose a lot of matches. He's going to be the new job of Mura. But he's a lot better. He's like, you can really actually do something with this dude. He, I mean, he's just so athletic. He, he's he's impressive to me. And um, Ryan Myers is a guy who can work. So I really enjoy him. I mean, he was he was another dude that they brought in and. They kind of allowed him to reinvent himself a little bit, you know, as the most professional wrestler. And that's why he's still here. And that's why he's still in the main event. I shouldn't say still in the main event, but he's doing main event stuff. He's involved with the world champion. He's never really come off as a jobber on impact television where, you know, I thought the major players was going to be a really, really good part of the show. And it wasn't because they wanted Matt Cardona to be Zach Ryder instead of Matt Cardona, the Matt Cardona that's been getting over everywhere else. They wanted him to be Zach fucking Ryder. And that hurt the major players and it hurt Matt Cardona. But Brian Myers has been able to create this most professional wrestler brand. And, um, he, you know, he can work a little bit. So I enjoy Brian Myers matches. And this, just like I said, this Kevin Knight dude, um, he, he can go. 
you know, I think he's he's going to be doing a lot of losing. <clears throat> but when they're doing some of these six mans that they do and ultimate X's and whatever the hell, like I hope he's really featured this year because he's just he's just excellent. I, w- I would love to see him get like a real run and some you know real um, momentum. So Brian Myers wins with the roster cut. Guess what happens after the match? Just guess. Eddie Edwards and Alicia come down to join Brian Myers in the ring um, for another post-match angle. And then Kushida runs down and, you know, they're, they're a tag team. So it makes sense. They can do Kushida and Knight versus uh, Eddie and Myers. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you can do that. Um, Which gives us a little tag team feud that doesn't have to do with the title. So I'm all for that, but it was just, again, Right, going with the post match back angle. I mean, there's there's got to be some more creative ways to do this, folks. There has to be. This was never a staple. In fact, in fact, there's a lot of crutches that they go to. This was not one of them, and it's becoming one of them. So that's um, concerning me. We got Gia Miller um, interviewing Chris Saban backstage, and again, looked better. The lighting was better. This was not as bad as the first couple episodes, but I just wish they would not interview people in the dark and then uh, uh, turn on the lights, you know, the lighting around them to to light them up. Just fucking turn the lights on in the damn room and then accent with the lighting. Um, they're doing this interview and, you know, Chris Saban saying the same stuff he always does. And then they play a Mustafa Ali video and they have let they're letting us know that he is coming for the x division championship so some some habits never die and this is one of them i said it last week when i reviewed the show i said ali is going to win the x division championship and he's probably going to do it in his first match they literally on their website are saying in his first in his impact I'm sorry, his TNA debut is wrestling for the X Division Championship. So we're not going to see him on TV. He, this is just another bring someone in for w, from WWE, win the title, beat your roster, and then leave. There's no way, dude. This is the new Trinity. Like, no one's beating this dude on the roster. And I don't, I don't see him losing until he leaves. And they, you know, they kind of did the same shit with Leo Rush. Now, he's going to be entertaining. Ali's going to be entertaining. He can talk. These uh, segments, I mean, these uh, these videos, these vignettes and stuff he's doing, they're very good. So I think he's going to be the most entertaining X Division champion in a really long time, probably since like Ace Austin, Ace Austin's first run. But um, the old habits never die. And that's what they're doing here. They're doing it with the tag team division. They're doing it with the X Division. Dude's going to come in, win the X Division. I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm freaking wrong. But um, all signs point towards, you know, WWE guy coming in, bland X Division champion has been champion forever, having a great match. Bland X Division champion loses the belt. WWE guy wins a belt, holds the title forever until he says, I want to go to another company or, or whatever the case. Um, then we heard from Frankie Kazarian. This was really good. Like, what a fucking pro, man. What a what a professional. What an asset to this company. He came out here, um, and the last wrestler to do a promo like this was Eddie Edwards with Honor, uh, Honor No More. But this was so much better to come out. He did hit us a little bit with the you people. You know, that, that's always a crutch for someone who turns heel. Uh, but just you know, he's established himself. He's going to be the 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 king of TNA. So I don't know if that's going to be kind of the gimmick he's going for. I don't mean a king like Jerry Lawler, but you know, as far like his his moniker and everything. But but this was good. This was this was really good. Like it was it was believable, and you know it was believable because the people were booing him, and they weren't booing him smiling like on AEW television. Or even on freaking Impact Television, a lot of the time they show people booing and they're hey, you know they're having a great time. The, the people were really booing him, um, and I, it wasn't nuclear heat. You know, I don't think we have that for anyone in, in wrestling right now, to where you just genuinely boo them because they're such a good bad guy. But 
this was one of the closest things to it. And I'm, I am all for this feud going forward. Again, like I love watching two guys who can freaking work, who don't have to flip around and, and have 50 near falls. Like I love when two guys can just work. So these guys feuding for a while is going to be, it's going to be good. I, I worry we're going to see them wrestle way too many times. Like I can see them, you know, trading wins and then having a gimmick match. And, you know, you, you can see all that happening just like Frankie and Eddie where it just wouldn't end, but the wrestling was good enough to where it was like, you know, it's, it's cool. Yeah. You know, I can keep watching this. I mean, I can watch any Frank Kazarian match. He's, he's just really good. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this um, quite a bit. And then we get an angle with the system and Alex Shelley backstage. You guys know, I love Alicia Edwards. Um, with with all of my heart but every time there's these system um you know segments backstage or whatever she just does does a lot of uh uh uh-huh like she's just making noises she's not adding a whole lot like i think it's okay to be silent in a lot of the instances and just kind of let moose do the talking but she you'll see what i'm talking about next time she just (laughs) yeah just making fucking noises you know what i mean but I love you, Alicia. Um, I love you with all my heart. And then we get uh, Ash by Elegance again. So what we're getting, and again, just old habits never die. We're getting Giselle Shaw challenge Trinity for the title. Trinity, I'm sorry, Jordan Grace for the Knockouts Championship. Tr- <laughs> Why do I want to keep saying Trinity? Giselle is going to lose. Okay, she's going to lose. She always loses. She's going to lose. She is just another sacrificial lamb. They do this all the time. She's going to lose. And then Ash by Elegance is going to come out after the match and establish that she's the number one contender for the title without wrestling a match. It's I know that this is what they're going to do because we know Giselle Shaw is not going to win, right? She, they, she's not even having backstage angles with fucking Jordan Grace. Like they're they're not even pretending like Jordan knows who she is at this point. She's not going to beat her. I mean, no, no, I shouldn't say that. They did. They did attack last week, right? They hit her with the X, and then they're wrestling next week. So I take that back. It's early. But no one can can truly believe that X that Giselle Shaw is going to win this thing. This Ultimate X. When was the last time someone won a title with this thing? I want to say whoever won the tag team Ultimate X. I think it might have been the Rascals or the Motor City, excuse me, Motor City Machine Guns. I don't even know who the hell. It couldn't have been the Machine Guns because I think Shelly was a champion at that time or wrestling for the title. I feel like it was the Rascals or ABC. I don't even know who won the match, but I just feel like no one ever wins a title who wins this thing. They just carry this big goofy X around, and then they don't win. I mean, Kushida... Um, Alan Angels. I'm trying to think of the the last couple. You know, no one ever seems to win. And this is going to be no different. She's not going to win. It's just setting up for Ash to finally show, reveal herself after the match. Is there like really, she she doesn't even have a a, a graphic for the company. They just have a, a screenshot of her or a photo of her sitting uh, ringside at Hard to Kill. And that's her, her fucking graphic, you know? So they're kind of keeping her in the back. You know, they're not just bringing her out right away. And this is why I tell you, I, I, I've been saying this, guys. I think she was the big signing that, that everyone was so excited about. And Scott DeMore had to backtrack on. Like, I think it's Ash. Um, so we'll see. But I, I'm, I say this a lot and I'm wrong when I say I've never been so confident in anything in my life. <laughs> I, I, again, I'm going to say it again. I'm like Chuck, Chuck, uh, Charles Barkley, Chuck, with his guarantees. Every time he guarantees something, it's wrong. That's kind of me when I say I've never been so confident about anything in my life. I've never been so confident in anything in my life that Giselle Shaw is going to lose this match and then Ash is going to come out afterwards to establish her number one contendership. Then we got Dieter in the ring. He He's acting like he said the design is dead. And then Khan came out to ultimately let him know that he said it. I, I don't understand. But he had a match with PCO here. So, of course, I didn't care. It was over very quickly. Thank God. And then Khan comes out and attacks them both. 
The only reason I have any interest in this is because Khan came out and said it's dead when I say it's dead. Like, I'm interested in what that means. Does that mean he's going to, they're going to continue as a team, but Khan is going to be the one in charge? Because I can see that's the direction they're going with it. Where he's just like, the design is dead, um, but I'm your big bully. I'm the leader here. I will take you out if I feel necessary. I don't think this is like the start of a Khan singles run. And I understand the story here because he said, I'm going to remind people who the baddest man in TNA is. He should say, I'm going to let him know who it is, not remind us because you never have been the baddest man. But you come out and take out TNA who, I mean, TNA, PCO, who TNA has branded as their baddest guy. You know, I I don't agree, but he is their crutch like big show, like Mark Henry, Kane, you know, like PCO is that crutch for them. So they paint him as the baddest guy in the company. Khan comes and, and lays him out. So I think there's more to this story than people are giving credit for. I think they're just like, okay, they're breaking up the design. Khan's going to get, get a single run. I think there's more to this. So stay tuned. Stay tuned to this. I don't think it's going to be as bad, bad as people think. And then um, <laughs> AJ Francis uh, talking to Rich Swan backstage. I thought this was great. I like AJ Francis, guys. I'm going to come out and say it. I like Top Dollar. Of course, there's the in-ring. People talk about the in-ring. I've never, I've never really cared about that as much. Yes, I like guys who can work. But if someone has just like this great character and this big larger than life presence backstage, like I can come, I can, I can live with him coming to the ring, doing some basic shit and winning. You know, like if Oleg Prudius was just like this amazing character, I'd be like, yo, put him in the ring. I don't give a shit. If um, who else? I guess Khan is an example. I feel like there's someone else. Uh, Shira, you know, if they're just these like incredible, huge, larger than life personalities, like I can deal with the matches, you know, if, if you entertain me in other ways. So I, I'm loving this. Loving it, loving it, loving it. And I'm I'm hoping that this does lead to Rich Swan turning. Um but for, you can tell this dude he has natural humor to him, like he's naturally funny. Just the way he tried to hey, hey Rhino, you need any help with that crazy Steve problem? And he says, Go fuck yourself. And then, okay, anyway, anyway, and he just kind of goes back to Rich Swan. I mean, just the transition of of that was so funny to me. I think he's entertaining as shit. And uh if Rich Swan turns heel and these guys are together in any way i will be here for it that's really what i'm hoping hoping happens i hope it's not just rich swan fighting this dude dude because rich swan as much as i love him he is bland right now you have to do something different with him so i think the heel turn for frankie is going to do wonders so let's do it with fucking rich swan too man like let's let's fucking go that's why i was saying with jordan grace turn her heel because we need something different obviously she's not going to after she was in the wwe royal rumble which is what they did here they just showed the um uh you know the backstage stuff this was really good and they've done a good job of kind of capitalizing on off all these things with jordan uh being in the rumble and i think you know it was it was a good thing to have her in it i think that was good for tna especially right now during the rebrand you know um she had mentioned, I just finished the Orlando tapings, but we're watching the Orlando tapings and they're pretending it's live. So it's, <laughs> um, I got to ask this question though. And Mike Gilbert said the same thing. Why isn't the match with Trinity, Jordan and Trinity versus Giselle and Savannah Evans? Why wasn't it on this episode? <laughs> I'm sitting here trying to think in my head, what what did they make? Why did they feel pushing it off a week was going to work? You already give us these long highlight videos to start off the show. So why not this Jordan Grace um, extended look at her at the Royal Rumble? Why not kick off the show with that? And then get into tonight's main event. Is you, you you show the angle of her and Trinity 
that they had at the Royal Rumble where they hugged and started attacking each other. And then you go into the graphic, like tonight's main event is Trinity and uh, Jordan Grace versus Giselle Shaw and Savannah Evans. Why fucking not do that? They know better than me, but I think that I think the iron is going to be cooled off by the point this match actually happens. I don't think they should be showing Trinity matches at this stage after she was in the Rumble. I think I can understand, um, uh, you know, the, the taping after the Rumble or the show episode after the Rumble, but after that, because then you get clowned online saying, oh, well, this person's in WWE, you know, but you're showing them on, on TV and you're acting like it's live. So I don't understand this. I think the company would have much more benefited from this match happening here, but it didn't. So I don't know. I don't know what they're thinking, but I, I, I think the iron is going to be cooled off by the point because you can't, you can't ride this forever. You know what I mean? The Jordan Grace Rumble stuff was great. You cannot ride it forever. They're going to try to. They've done a really good job with social media, and I think they might even have put the full match up with her and Trinity on YouTube. If not, they need to. Um, they've done good. They've done really good. They've been dying. This company's been dying for something like this <laughs> to happen so they can post all this footage and then now you use your library in a way that's more conducive to bringing in new viewers and signups. And, you know, that's how you do it. Not posting fucking AJ Styles versus Christopher Daniels for the 10th time in a fucking year. You know, like this is how you, how you utilize the library. You build up a good show, a good library. And then when it's relevant, you know, when it, when it's more relevant to what's going on, tie it in and boom, you know, like they've been dying for this. Um, and we got, I don't, I must have fast forwarded through this. It was Tom. Han oh no, you know what? I didn't. I remember it showed Tom Hannafin sitting in the dark with Zaya Brookside. Zaya looked pretty good here. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, but they're sitting in the dark and doing an interview with music in the background. And that just feels comes out. He did, right? I don't remember this segment very well. I just, I, I've kind of got it jotted down here that this is what it was. I believe Tasha came out and they, they're going to keep fighting, right? All right. We got Masha Slamovich with Killer Keller in her corner versus Jody Threat and Danny Luna. I said this last week. I don't know why Jody Threat does the, I, I never get it. Is it mascara that you put on eyelashes? I don't know why it's only on one eye and not the other. Because it looks like in her graphics that she has a black eye. So I don't, you know. I guess she's trying to be rebellious. I don't think it's necessary. But what do I know? I'm not the character, right? So she can do whatever the F she wants to do. So this was okay because everything Masha does is good. Like she is so incredible in the ring that it doesn't matter who her opponent is. Even in the squash matches she was doing, like it just always looked, it always looked good. Um, I just wanted to rename that damn finisher of the snowplow. But we knew that we knew Masha was going to win. I mean, get out of here. So she wins with the slow plow. Wish they would stop calling it that. And then they go into a backstage angle of the system attacked Kushida. And these are always dumb too. You, you, you hit someone with all these moves in the ring and slam them on the chairs and hit with finishers and they kick out it too. But you, you know, you hit someone backstage and they're dead. And they let us know. Uh, no Surrender is coming. Uh, we're going to get Moose versus Alex Shelley in the main event. So I'm glad they didn't rush this to where it was just on the next episode of Impact. I'm glad that, you know, push it off a little bit to where we're not, where we have some interest in seeing it again. Because when you have rematches immediately after each other, it's just like, who the fuck wants to watch this? So yeah, we're getting Moose versus Alex Shelley, world title. And then they let us know that at this point in the episode that Jordan Grace and Trinity are teaming up versus Giselle Shaw and Savannah Evans. I got to say, again, the graphics that they are putting out are so good and they're different. You know, um, they keep the same general like aesthetic and the same look. But, uh, you know, they do the and some of them, they have the their name in the background in, in like fluorescent lights and they have different angles on the wrestlers. And it, it has the same general look, but it's different at the same time. Like they're just doing whether it's a tag team match, single match, whatever, like the, the graphics differ. And they were using the same tired, 
graphic with the red background for like four years. And I'm like, oh, my God. And they've really stepped up their their game with this. I'm very impressed with it. And then sponsored by cell phone for the three of you that feel like you might watch that. Um, available, <laughs> available video on demand February 13th. We get um, ABC versus the Grizzled Young Vets. And I'm not going to lie. I kind of checked out because I just don't. I didn't have interest in the match. I know a lot of you guys do. So I'm not saying it was bad. Please do not take my words and twist them. This was not a bad match. I just don't care about the Grizzled Young Vets. They're doing exactly what I said was going to happen. They were going to they weren't going to win a hard to kill, but they were going to win at the tapings and win the titles. And I, again, I could be wrong. And we may never see the Grizzled Young Vets again. And this might just be a feud for ABC and ABC retains their belts i don't think they're going to i i but i kind of hope they do i just I, I just don't they don't do it for me grizzly young vets don't do it for me they're good abc's good it just all this in general doesn't do, do this for me i'm probably never going to remember these guys names zach gibson and james drake i'm gonna have to look at my notes every single time they, these guys wrestle i just don't think i'll ever remember their names but um, yeah, Gr Grizzly Young Vets won. I was so checked out that at one point I just saw the Grizzly Young Vets walk around, walk away as the winners. I, you know, I did, I wasn't like, I didn't even see the finish. I just, I don't want to see a best of three. I don't want to see this again. And then again, I just don't, but many of you do. So that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Overall. As I finish stumbling my way through this episode because I'm still tired. Overall, this was a solid episode, a solid effort. I thought it was better than last week's. Um, they're doing the post match attacks, which I, at least it wasn't after every match here, but the theme was still attack after the match. And even if, even if it was attacking Sheeta in the backstage, who was apparently just walking around by himself in the back of the arena. Just find, please find some better creative ways to do this. You feel me? So this was not my best review. This is not my best review at all, but thanks for riding with me. Uh, I will check you guys soon and uh, hopefully I can get this colli uh, collision. Yeah, right. Um, get this explosion review done. Um, it's not going to be a real long video. Just kind of give my general thoughts and um, got some other content coming when I have the time. I can, when I squeeze them in. Thanks for checking me out, guys. I'm out. Peace.